This is the most controversial thing in all of food science. The question is, can we prove it? Huh. This looks promising. Saturated fatty acids have a detrimental effect on plasma lipids. Dang, why? Oh, because it raises LDL. Oh boy. How does saturated fat do that? Oh, it says saturated fat doesn't impact the making of cholesterol. It messes with the liver and tells it to leave LDL in the blood instead of clearing it. They found this out by working with pigs. Oh, okay, that, that's not every day. I'm sure there were some human studies at some point. Let's see, uh, rats, uh, guinea pigs, and hamsters. Uh... I guess we can't be mad at that. Plenty of studies use animals to help us understand stuff. And plus, it lists plenty of studies that agree with the finding. Let's take a look. This one is by Fernandez. This one is by Fernandez. This one is by Fernandez. Hey, all these studies by the same lady. Why is there such little science to explain how saturated fat increases cholesterol? Huh? What's this? Ooh, an interventional study with 14 humans that were fed saturated fat in the form of beef tallow and unsat fat in the form of corn oil and directly measured cholesterol? Mono e mono, sat fat versus unsat fat. This should be good. But what did they find? They found two things. One, same thing as the last study. Neither fat directly drives cholesterol synthesis. Number two, saturated fats increased blood LDL cholesterol when compared to unsat fat. Okay, yeah, that, that's established research. Oh, but they include that neither fat can directly influence the amount of cholesterol in an LDL particle. Hey, if you're still confused, that's because you don't quite understand the difference between LDL and cholesterol because they aren't one and the same in the body. LDL is a delivery truck that actually delivers fat. One of the fats that are delivered is cholesterol. So we can actually have an LDL particle that has a lot of cholesterol waiting to be delivered, or we can have an LDL particle that doesn't have a lot of cholesterol. What we're saying is that there is a variance in the amount of cholesterol that an LDL particle can carry. So saturated fat on cholesterol doesn't seem to be as straightforward in this study that was sponsored by... Sponsored by Uncle Ben and the American Egg Board? Biased science does not mean bad science. Biased, Biased science, science does, does not mean bad science. Biased science, science does not mean bad science. Buddy, I'm making some eggs. You want some? Huh? Do you want some eggs? Cholesterol. Eggs are gonna kill you. Cholesterol. 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 No. Actually. Mm. Guys, did you know that you can direct these videos? Yep, you sure can. You're the boss of the questions that I answer. And not only that, you can submit the research that you yourself find and they can make it onto a NoLab Core required video. If you're interested in that, check out the link in the description and join the Patreon. Join the control group. Elbows on the table. If you see my last video, you'll know that we proposed a question of why we never thought of the mechanism of saturated fat resulting in increased LDL as a measure of homeostasis. Which all things considered, we see this from saturated fat when it's compared to its counterparts in mono and polyunsaturated fat. So a genuine question, is it that sat fat raises LDL or could this be a function of homeostasis in the same way that poly lowers LDL and mono is meant to be neutral? Why have we written off the effects of sat fat as atherogenic? Well, here's a fascinating study that looked at cholesterol levels being modulated as a result of trying to keep the cell membrane properly flexible. You remember that sat fat adds firmness and unsat fat adds fluidity? What well, we do know, the cholesterol acts to support structure by acting like a pillar would in a building, right there in the cell wall. And what this study is saying is that the more of those kinky fluid polyunsat fats are incorporated, the more cholesterol the cell will call for. The more cholesterol needed in the cell, the less of it in the blood. And then this would be vice versa for saturated fat. Okay, well, can anyone guess where this can go wrong? Trick question, we can. But scientists have tried shooting this model down and they called it straight up incorrect in response to this paper. And these original authors actually clapped back in defense of their original model. And you can check out the entire thing. It's all online, top right corner. If you wanna see nerds go back and forth about cholesterol. This back and forth proves only one thing, that we have uncertainty, non-consensus, uh, confusion, controversy, wherever you wanna go with it. 
But I believe there's beauty in the non-absolutes. That's a part of it, right? Which is kind of also what makes the diet heart theory bogus. It was never as straightforward as consuming saturated fat equals heart disease. That is a scientific jaywalk. The type of saturated fat matters. The literal saturated fat molecule, the literal fatty acid, they all have different impacts. We have to consider dietary context. What are we eating along with the saturated fat? Does that change anything? Or individual variants, right? Our genes. What size jeans do you wear? 32, 36? This, this is a very bad DNA joke. I'm, I'm turning into my middle school teacher. The problem is, and always will be, hard wrecks with low context. That's why only you can prevent wildfires. Hope you guys get some insight and perspective out of this one. I'm gonna get a bash away.